It's Christmas! Welcome back everybody to Young Mutant Sports. My name is James Irvin. David the Snowman is back. In fact, he's so back, he's going big for this video. Just because he wants to show everyone... <laughs> he's so big. Uh, that's what she said. We want to show everybody how excited he is to be back and welcome back to the channel. But today, we are breaking down the Bills versus the Bucks. A game I was very obviously cheering for the Bills to win. Not because I hate Tom Brady or anything like that, but the Bucks losing helps the Green Bay Packers. Without further ado, let's get break down right this game. I'm going to read off some box score stats and tell you how this game went down. Josh Allen, 36 of 54, 308 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Tom Brady matched him, 31 of 46, 363 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. You want to know what hurt the Bills' offense in this game? It wasn't Josh Allen. Josh Allen put it all on the line. He's so very good. Top 10 quarterback in this league right now. Not all time, obviously, right now. They didn't run the ball to a back for the entire first half. They they didn't run the ball. Their entire offense is Josh Allen. And once you figure out how to stop that, their offense is done. The problem is you can't stop Josh Allen. He just can't carry this team well enough. I think they're going to finish like 11-6, and 10-7, and seven, make a 7-seed or a 6-seed playoff team. It'd be a very dangerous playoff team at that. But the point of the matter is he can't just carry this offense forever. Like, you got to get him some other help. He's got great receivers. But that run game is going to hurt you down the line in the playoffs. I mean, this is their running stats. Josh Allen, 12 carries, 109 yards, and a touchdown. Devin Singletary, 7 carries, 30-something yards. Devin Singletary did more in the receiving game than he did as a running back. They don't run the ball to the running backs. They don't have any interior offensive line blocking unless it's a QB power or Josh Allen's making some of his legs. And they don't really have a true running back. I like Devin Singletary. Zach Moss, I thought, eh, is eh. But they need another running back. And this, sadly, this running back draft class coming up isn't as special as as the ones were last year. Javante Williams, look how good he's doing in Denver. Travis Etienne, once he comes back with Jacksonville, still wasted pick by me, and we'll do end-of-year draft grades too. But I thought, I think Travis Etienne is going to be very good. They're going to have a very good one-two punch combo with James Robinson and Travis Etienne. And then, of course, Najee Harris is balled out for Pittsburgh. So I think out of the great running backs in this draft class that I think they're all going to be, and Michael Carter is just right there with them. He hasn't been as good, but he's on IR right now. His season's done, I think. So, but as that teams, whose running backs have been that good, the Bills just don't have it. The Bills don't have it. And you got to get Josh Allen some more help. Him and Diggs have a great connection. Beasley's kind of getting it going. Dawson Knox had a touchdown this game. Uh, Beasley, it's nine catches, six for you. He's kind of missed a reliable out there. Gabriel Davis had a touchdown. He's spreading the ball out. The point is... When teams are scoring this many points on your defense, I mean, you got to get in the run game. You got to just be able to chew clock when you're passing the ball all the time and people drop it. The clock stops. You're moving down the field quicker. You're not chewing as much clock as you would like to be. Now, Josh Allen runs are great. I love watching Josh Allen. He's very fun to watch. But you got to get him some run game. Moving on to the... Buccaneers, Tom Brady, again, two touchdowns, but guess what? He rivaled Josh Allen in the run game. Seven carries, 16 yards, and a touchdown. That's the MVP of the league, and he's 44 years old. That's insane. Uh, Lenny, Leonard Fournette, had a great day running the ball as well. 19 carries, 113 yards, and a touchdown. Chris Godwin was the leading receiver for Buccaneers, 10 for 105. Mike Evans, 6 for 91 and a touchdown. And then the Brashad Perryman, 700th career touchdown pass, strike in overtime to win the game. To Brashad Perryman. Could have been Antonio Brown, but Brashad Perryman coming on. Apparently, the Bucs want to cut Antonio Brown. Those are the rumors after he uh, used the fake vaccination card. Moving on. Very good game. Very fun game to watch. The Bucks were in control. And I thought the Bills were going to get blown out. When you're watching NFL Red Zone, Sky Hansen was like, man, the only close game right now is Cincinnati and uh, San Francisco, which was another fun game. We said huge wild card implications. But, you know, this was a fun game. The Bucks had control almost the entire game. At one point, it was like 24-3, 21-3. Like, it was, it was a good game, right? And then all of a sudden, here comes Josh out on the Bills. They got hot at the right time. And that entire second quarter half belonged to the Buffalo Bills. He was so electric. 
The Bills' offense was moving. Their defense was getting stopped. When it was a third down they needed, it was a third down that they needed, the Bucks picked it up. But offsetting penalties, they had to redo it and came in there and got the sack. Buffalo Bills sacked him. Matt Milano is a beast, and he got paid this offseason. I'm very happy for him because he is one of the most underrated linebackers in football. Doesn't get his name out there enough. He is a beast. Him and Tremaine Edwins are beasts. I have to lower David. I'm sorry. It's getting distracted. He is a beast out there for the Buffalo Bills defense, them and Tremaine Edwins. So the Bucks were in control the entire game. The Bills come storming back. And then in overtime, the Bills have a chance to win it. And they have – they don't score. They had to punt it away. Tom Brady said getting field goal range. It didn't matter. Rashad Perryman outran Tremaine Edwins all the way for the score. 700th career touchdown pass. They had a runner come in and get there because the guy who had Tom Brady got like a bunch of free Bitcoin and signed helmets and stuff like that. Like, we're not giving him any more free stuff. Nah, we're not giving him more free stuff. So we'll take this away from you and we'll give, you know, Tom Brady's actual 700th career touchdown pass. To throw a strike and win in such a Fun game. It's going to be looked back on no matter how the playoffs end as maybe disastrous for the Bills or maybe the Bucks get that key, key victory that can boost them up in the rankings a little bit. You know, hey, who knows, right? But let's talk playoff seeding for a second before we close out this video. The Bills needed this win. They are sitting at 7-6. and six. That is not a good spot to be in when you get Pittsburgh Steelers behind you at 6-6-1. Six, six and one. And if they beat the Lions, they're 7-6. and six. The Colts jump ahead of you because they're seven and six. Josh, John Taylor threw, ran for five touchdowns on you. I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on there. I mean, they went from like a potential five to six seed to the seven seed, no matter what. The Colts went from the nine seed to the six seed. You put those two together, you get 69. Nice. Huge playoff implication happened for the AFC. The AFC isn't over yet. We'll talk about that in a second. But current standings, man, are you got Baltimore leading and Lamar Jackson may be hurt and missed significant time. Their season may be over. They're very beat up and they lost to Cleveland. You get the Patriots up there in said Bills division, who they lost to. You get the Chiefs up there who've come storming back after and the entire media wrote them off as dead, no good, not worthy, and Patrick Mahomes stinks. Turns out they don't, and they're back. And then the Titans. Leading the AFC South. I think they have that division pretty much locked up since they've already swept the Colts. But wild card teams, you got the Colts shooting up to a six seed. Bills are a seven seed. And just right there in the mix of it, that entire AFC North. Bengals could have got a huge win against San Francisco. Didn't. Because Debo, or Brandon Ayuk, and Jimmy G is gorgeous smile. You have the Browns who are 3-1 and one in division play. I think they're probably going to win the North. I don't think Pittsburgh can come back and keep up with them. I don't think Cincinnati can even keep up with them. So I think, yeah, I think Cleveland's going to win the division still. Uh, and then you have Baltimore, who's falling apart bit by bit. And the Steelers have a culture problem, something you never thought you would say. And then there's a sneaky one. Here comes Miami. They are 6-7. and seven. If the Bills lose a game... And the Miami Dolphins lose a game, or win a game, they both have the exact same record at 7-7. Seven and seven. Now, you tell me who's more likely to get the playoffs, Bills or Dolphins. They play each other twice a year. And my Buffalo shut them out earlier this year. <laughs> I mean, so they got one more game, and that's about it. And then you got the Chargers. Chargers are a playoff team. You can't give... <laughs> Excuse me. You can't convince me otherwise. Chargers are not a playoff team. They are. Chargers are a playoff team. So, it's going to get tight for Buffalo. I think they'll squeak in, but it's going to get tight for them competing with LA Chargers, Bengals, Browns, the entire AFC North pretty much. Um, the Chargers, Raiders maybe, Miami, and the Colts. You already don't have tiebreaker over Colts. Colts have tiebreaker over you. So, tough game. But I think the Bills, uh, I don't know. They, that second half looked promising. I like the Bills a lot because I like Josh Allen a lot. I like Stephon Diggs, and I love Matt Milano and Tredavious White. That's another thing that's hurting them. Tredavious White's out. So but let's talk NFC. The NFC isn't over yet. Tonight, this is being recorded on Monday. It's Monday Night Football, Rams, Cardinals. Huge playoff matchup for huge implications. Huge everything involved in this game. 
The Cardinals are sitting currently at 10-2. If the Rams find a way to beat them, that means the Packers, the Bucks, and the Cardinals are all sitting at 10-3. Three. three teams sitting at 10-3. and three. It's huge. I mean, it's huge for the Green Bay Packers and the Buccaneers because even they have a chance at that one seed because they're 10-3. and three. All three of those teams would be 10-3 and three competing for the one seed. And the Rams, it'd be huge for them because that would almost guarantee a wild card spot. I think they're going to get the wild card spot. That would almost guarantee a wild card spot and make the division race a little bit tighter. A little bit tighter up there for the Arizona Cardinals. I think Cardinals are still going to win the division. But huge playoff implications for tonight. It's all for the top seed. Who's going to get that one seed? Who's going to get that bye? And who's going to force everyone else to play one extra playoff game on the road to the Super Bowl? Bucks get the win. Tom Brady's a goat. The goat. Yeah. He's 44 and he's doing stuff like this. Just touchdown. Unbelievable. The Bills may be falling out of the playoffs, and the Bucks want that one seed. This was a huge game for both sides, both conferences for playoff matches, and it was ultimately really, really fun. Cardinals, Rams, Monday night. Let's go, Rams. David Snowman's back. It's Christmas all around. Christmas spirit is in. Thank you for listening. Year, and here he is on third and three from the pocket. Connecting. That's Perriman taking it all the way for the win. The first time he had been targeted the entire game. Rashad Perriman.